Oh, no pressure. Thanks. No pressure. You're, this is your fad. How good are you? <laughs> I feel like I'm being interviewed for 60 minutes. Okay. One day. Good morning. I'm just putting a disclaimer that it's very noisy here. So I'm shouting. I'm so sorry. But we have a backup mic by the amazing Eden who just came up with this great idea, which is, what are you doing? Just so people at home I'm can... I'm recording on voice memos and then we can put the audio on top of the video file so you can hear everything she's saying. It's amazing. And I've got a second camera here so we'll occasionally look at you as well. Okay. So we are going to do a very glamorous makeup look today. I've only met Eden five minutes ago. I've been wanting this girl's face in front of me for so long. Um, and it's one of those unplanned makeups, which is my favourite ones to do, where I have no idea. And I just let it happen. So I will apologise now for the occasional bus siren when you're a fire department that might happen. So I've just been, um, all I've done is just been playing with makeup skin tones to match her colour. She's just got married recently. I have. Oh, <laughs> amazing. She looked amazing. And I'll put your Instagram follow handle up as well so people can see your incredible face. Got the amazing Jasmine behind the camera today, who's been a model for me as well. So all I'm putting on her skin is Sickle Fate by Avene. It's a very um, strong hydrating cream. There's a light version and a strong version. Sorry, I don't have the tube because I've decanted it into this. So this is the uh, this is the thicker one actually. I'm just giving her skin lots of love. I'm going to put some lip balm straight on. I like my models to feel hydrated the whole time. This is my favourite. Do you, Mecca. Oh, this is the I'm best. obsessed with this. It's that bubblegum colour and it tastes like strawberry. And it gum. smells like cupcakes. No, and it's got sunscreen. Yeah. Yeah. Which might, this is the thing I always tell, tell people, especially when you're out in the sun, girls and boys like to wear lip gloss. Putting lip gloss is like mm. putting baby oil on your mouth. And you fry those lips and they will be burnt to crisps. I know. That's like my one rule with anything beauty. It's like sunscreen. Sunscreen. Sunscreen, sunscreen all over your body. Sunscreen yep. on your lips. Sunscreen. And then the girls go put like babe, like bus or like lip gloss and go out in the sun. Mm. Like, so this is, I'm using NARS, um, medium one. I've got to be very careful she's wearing white. So close your eyes. Really. So you can see this is being warmed up because her skin colour is more tanned and just cover your lips for me i'm covering the lips so we don't get foundation all over the lips but i'm really buffing this quite intensely and it would feel very soft i'm assuming it feels mm -hmm. like silk and the reason for this i'd rather have something really soft to polish the skin and do more of a buffing action because you get this you just get it's hard to explain Sponges are great for when you want to build up product on this area. Fingers are great, um, but you can't rub as aggressively. But it, I promise you, this feels like silk kimono on the face. And it's brush number 28. Now, I'm just going to conceal in these corners. And the reason I'm doing this part now in the corners when I'm going to go dark or intense with colour, and I want the colour to pop, I want to just make sure any of that, not that you're dark, but any blue or red undertones are not here, because colour sometimes can be a bit distorted, if that makes sense. So this way it'll give me a really true reading of what the colour is going to look like. Oh, the concealer colour I'm using is NARS, and this is also medium one. Sorry, I haven't labelled that beautifully yet, but that's medium one in the pot, the NARS pot. And this is just a light wash of the concealer on the lids. I'm just going to put it on there. It's a little trick that I do. Now, I don't normally like concealer on the lids because the product is too thick. However, I'm letting the body heat it up. And this is where I do like to use sponges. And then I'm going to shear it right down. That's just the bus 73 to Bondi Junction that just went past. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can obviously, I mean, I do love to use liquid foundations here, but when I'm going really strong in color, I just want to block those eyelids from any blue red undertone. Now the colors that I didn't realize until I just started playing with it, thank you Jess, is these really dark ones are incredible. 
So there's this incredible blue, green, um, and navy blue. Now, I was very honest with Eden. I love these colours, and she's such, look at that. But these colours, they stain. So because I love to have transparency, I said, Eden, I'm going to put these on. This is on my bare hand, by the way. Um, so obviously with foundation, it's going to help. But when I wipe this off, oh, I have pad on it. When I wipe that off, there's going to be a little bit of a mark. Now, I know I can get this off her. See that stain there? So there's a really good oil called Telesis oil, which it just lifts that off the skin. Another thing you can do is just things like um, Vaseline or any form of like strong oil or lip balms. Let it soak and it will just lift it up off the skin. Okay, this is a Tom Ford pencil called Exotic Teal. We'll have all these notes for you anyway. And I always do this first. I want to create the shape. So if you can look straight to me. And so if you've watched my videos before, you'll notice something that I tend to do that's not always mainstream, which is I do the under eye first when I know I'm going quite glamorous. And there's a reason I do this because you get when I want that real lifted cat eye, you get more lift from what you do under the eye than what you do on top. And it's much easier, I'm going to go this way. It's much easier if you create the under shape first to join the top into the bottom, not the bottom into the top. You can make your eyes look really small. Anyway, so this is just teal green colour. You can blink as much as you like. You really want pencils here that aren't um, quick dry or the permanent ones. It's, you can sort of sketch out how to play. And if you love it, sure, you can put the waterproof ones on. But I like to do this to get my shape and then I'm gonna lock it down with eyeshadow. And this is a really small brush, this is 7.6. And one more really good tip when you're pulling eye shapes out, take a brush, this, I love this one, this is the 8.5, it's more of an oval shape, a clean brush, and that's what really gets your edges beautifully feathered. That's one of the, my favourite tricks. Sometimes you just need brushes in your kit with nothing on them, just as like an eraser, just to blend out. Now from here, we're going to take the shape in. So what I like to do is whenever my model looks straight ahead, I want to see a hint of this green when her eyes are open. So I'm just going to put it right on the little fold of skin. So whenever the eyes are open, that's where you want to put it. And that's why this technique works with all eye shapes. I'm just filling in that outer corner. Okay. Now, when you're working with really strong colour, It's important not to blend up too high because you've always got to have room to move. So I'm going to keep this blend quite narrow. I'm not worrying about hitting the eyelid because the eyelids are going to be green anyway. This is a clean cotton tip with some um, Crayolin or Bioderma. I'm just going to shorten my shape. This feel it was a little bit too long. Again, a little bit hard to do that with powders. The good thing about creams as well is because they crease and they're moving around the eyelid a little bit, I, it's actually good because I can see what problem areas I might have later. Like, for example, if I was just using creams and I can look up straight in, I can see that we're getting a little bit of creep because her eyes are so big and amazing. When she moves her eyes, we, it comes down here. So that would be an area I have to definitely make sure was set. So all I've done here is added a little bit of eyeshadow, which I'm going to show you. So I'm taking that same pencil and I'm just going to apply it just to the top lash line, but all the way across. Just gently close. Now I don't normally let models close when I'm doing liner because I don't want the skin to buckle and crease, but when I'm going to smudge something, it's okay. All right, it's a 9.1, really tiny. 
can just now get you to look down, Eden. Now, don't worry about the creases on the eyelid. We'll deal with those in a minute. So it's basically of doing under eye first to a triangle into the top crease, corner along the eyelash line. So what I did there, just to, for something to do, I picked up this blue, which is called, I don't know the colour, Kiwi, I think it's called. So it's this really, really pale blue here. Danessa Myricks on a clean brush. That's the magic to this and what's going to help you. It's having so many clean brushes when you're dealing with such bright colours. And you can see it's really blue. But what I did, I did it on this side here. I just took my green into the corner. It's probably got too much blue on it. Just so the aqua went lighter for some reason, I just didn't want to go too dark in this corner. And Jess, my assistant, just asked me a really good question. He said, how far do you bring this top part in? And the best answer is bring it in less than you think. Because if you bring it in too far, you can close, you can bring your eyes too close together. So the golden rule with makeup is have them wider apart than what you think. And how you do that is all your eyeliners, all your inside eye makeup, you just pull it out more than you think. You can always go back in later and move them in. So I'm just, just going on top of the green with it. For no other reason, but just an impulsive idea. So that creasing is just the foundation I had on earlier. And I haven't powdered it because I'm not sure what I'm going to put on here yet. If I was going to put glitter or a really shimmery product, I would leave that natural oil on the eyelid because it's a great thing for shimmers to stick to. So now I'm just taking this colour, it's called Enigma. It looks like it's black. It's this really, really deep blue-black colour here. I'm going to go in here, sorry. It's called Enigma. It's this one here. This one here. And that's what I'm going to press onto the outer corner. So down here. And it will just stick on that pencil. Powders are really hard to blend on lids that aren't pre-powdered. But just for this part of the eye, I just want it so full on. I actually want to like more press it on. Just in that corner nice and dark. So I always intensify when I'm doing an eye like this, I make the, this part here the darkest corner. But one thing I do when I start working with darker colors, you'll notice I'm keeping it within the base color I did before. Same color. Is that for me? This is just going to come in this outer corner. And then this way. And the whole time I'm like, now, do I do the eyelids? Do I do the eyelids? Because that's what makes or breaks the eye. And what I want to do now is come really, really close to the lash line with that blue colour. So I've gone for a really small square brush. This is number 17. I have put a little bit of water on my brush. Oh, is that for me? And I'm going to come right close to the lash line now. I'm going to use it is Jubilee so that's this little green one here this one there it's quite metallic it's quite full-on I am going to wet my brush um, just for safety also she's wearing a white top <laughs> you can spill things on it oh well. yeah you, you're just not normal just so you know <laughs> okay this is not normal <laughs> I do love capes. I will get, um, I'm just out of stock. If anyone can find them, they're headdressing capes, but uh, there are many ones, but they're white. And they're so, because mm. it keeps the light, because black yeah. capes just suck the light out. White headdressing yeah. capes are amazing. Maybe she's just getting made. Okay, so just look down. Now, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I like to turn my brush upside down. And the reason I'm turning my brushes upside down 
look with the wet brush like I've done I probably didn't need to do this but it just keeps the color close to the bottom part of the lid if you're doing this with just shimmers and you work like that it can just shimmer and flick up ways where if you go this way it just keeps everything close to the eyelid because I know I'm going to clean up under the eye I'm, I'm not too worried about the fall that but seriously when you're doing eyes like this just don't get all that foundation perfect first like I said, the reason I did put it on is because I wanted to see these colours in their true colour. Alright, so we didn't come here to eat our lunch, so we're going to go quite strong. Eyes up for me. Sorry, honey. Have a blink, have a blink, have a blink. Mm, you're fine, Same go for it. the blue colour. Some people love this sensation. I do. I do love you? it. I love it. I'm like, mm. Some people love like um, Jess, my boy, she's just like, do it more, don't stop, don't mm. stop. So don't assume everyone's like that, people, but um, you're doing so well. Brilliant. Up the other way. And the eyes up for me. I'm actually, instead of lightening and highlighting, I know that's probably the worst. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm oh, fine. Okay. Yeah. Eyes up for me. This is the inner corner. It's this crazy trick, and it makes the eyes, cra in a weird way, look bigger because it actually extends the eyes in those corners. And just closely. Just getting in that little lash line. Because the creams have been used mainly in the exterior of the eye, that's the part where you, if you have blending problems, creams are so easy to fix. So even if you want to do eyeshadow all over, a great trick if you struggle with blending is keep creams at the exterior, powders on the interior to soften your edges. And then if you're happy with it, you can powder your exterior. I hope that makes sense. So just taking a translucent powder. This is the Laura Mercier translucent powder, 7.5. It's got to be clean and it's just got the powder. And I'm just going to come up on my edge and just, I just like to powder this part. Okay, my favorite eyelash curler. Look down for me, Kevin or Kwan. Okay, is that you okay there? Yep, Three perfect. seconds, one, two, oh, you're so good. Sometimes I let models do their own lashes only if mm. I know they're good at them. Please ignore any of that creasing underneath. We are gonna deal with that once I've done all the lashes and mascara. I'm gonna put quite a lot of mascara on her. And it's something that I do, I do let that sit because I want it to heat up and I want to see where it's going to bleed down. So then when I, when I clean up, I know exactly where to clean it and exactly where I need to set it. So I'm not, I don't worry about that part yet. So I'm going to use some mascara. This is Marc Jacobs. I love a metal comb. It's the only way I love to do mascara. Also in this hygiene world. I'm just going to load the tip up. Have I got like one minute? Yeah. Now we're going to pause from this camera and now we're going to go onto a closer camera. So mascara, I'm just, this is a, my older brush, but I still love it. So you just put the mascara on the very, very tip. But the great thing about a metal kind, well, hygiene, obviously, and you can get every lash, look at that, right to the root. And the other reason is if you don't want a mascara all the way down, sometimes people have, what a crazy problem, they have really long under lashes and it can pull the eyes down. So with a metal comb, you can just do roots and mid lengths and pull out, which is what I'll show you. So that's what I'm doing now. So I'm just doing, I'm putting a lot on there too. Roots and mid lengths. That will give you more of an eyeliner effect. That effect, which is great if you want to put under lashes on as well, because you want the lashes to be thick to thin underneath. Or, eyes up for me, which we're going to do here. We're just going to go the whole way down but I always start at the root each time you can blink as much as you like to even oh, a really good trick with these two if you wipe them straight away the baby wipe it's just so much easier than waiting for mascara to dry it's too hard to clean so I'm gonna do jump ahead here and do her brows I do love the one of my favorite Troy Surratt have a really good one but also it's something I love I talk about all the time the Thousand Hour Ardell, it's a clear tube, it's one of the strongest gels. Oh, there you go Jess, this one, I'll use this one here, Thousand Hour. 
Oh. And you found a sp- Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's the bus 96 going to Dr. Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Lee's not on the flight path. That's the worst. Because mm. our studios are not even airport. Now, her brows are just staying up, so I don't need to reheal them. But sometimes if you... Oh, yeah, like this one. This area here tends to always... These brows here tend to be easy to comb up. These little little ones in here can be hard. So what you need to do while that gel is wet, just hold it. You don't want to re-comb through these. because It's like hairspray. It just goes all flaky and white. So while that's drying, I'm now going to jump back to my top lashes. My husband is so, he used to be a racing car driver, but he's so into cars that I'm not even kidding you. Especially through the tunnel, he can tell you that's an Aston Martin. The year in the May. Yeah. Yeah. My husband does the same. Because we hear the cars drive past our house. Just by the rev, he'll know. Know the car. And I've started betting him Oh, like sweaters. We have oh. this thing where I bet him sweaters. Sweaters? Yeah. That's an American term. I know. It's, mm. I don't know why we call them sweaters. Yeah. 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 But I say, I bet you a sweater. That do you actually have to buy him a sweater? Yeah, you have to oh, buy you do. Him a yeah. So, so it's expensive because you win a lot? He wins every time. I owe him about six sweaters. But when he says it's an AMG GT Mercedes, do you know what an AMG GT like, is? No, he, I have no idea. What so he saying. could be like, I do, I do watch it go past and if he says the, oh, wow, if he says the right, I'm like, wow. Oh. Yeah, well, that's dry. I'm going to to brass. So I do love these. I use these all the time. They drive me nuts, as you probably know if you've watched me before. These do squirt, so I'm going to move this away from you. You know what? There's nothing wrong with it. It just separates. You just got to mix the fluid back in with the cream. I just like them, how liquidy they are. All right, this is the sharpest brow brush, number 16. Got to get your strands, practice them on your hand, don't use the face as a testing pad. So I'm just going to do baby strokes. I thought it was a bit thick. You press too hard like I just did. And the strokes too thick, just pick up a clean brush. Always keep your foundation handy. And just like an eraser, you can thin the stroke straight down. And just coming back, I call it sharpening my sword. I just think, even if you know you want to do a full brow, like a full powdered brow, still, I still do this first, because I can always fill them later. I always like to define this top part here. So this one brow is just staring at me, and that one little hair is just too dark. I don't like it. So tilt the head back, because we tend to photograph our models from underneath. And this is when I finish the eyes off. I'm going to do the same trick to even out Make sure my eye shapes are perfect. Now I'm turning the brush on the side just to give myself a little bit of a shelf. Okay, let's get some lashes on. Right, these are my favourites. Um, no, I'm not endorsed by Model Rock, but I love these single flares. They've got a square base. This is a 10 millimeter, which I find is a really good length. And these are a D curl. Now, Raylene from Model Rock says, everyone loves C's. They love C's because they don't know what a D is. So C's got like a soft curl, D really curls. And these are her tweezers, which I never ever used until a week ago. And now I'm completely obsessed. So they're quite sharp and dangerous and they're used for eyelash extensions. But what they're really good for is getting these little buggers off, which can be really hard. So you can actually pull them from that end. So this is a 12, these are longer, because I just found the one I put on there wasn't long enough. So I'm gonna use the 10s on the inner corner and then the 12s on the outer corner. And what I always do first is just fill in gaps. So these are a, uh, a D curl. So guys, if you just, from now on, just buy D curls, it'll make your life so much easier. I only use black glue if the makeup's dark around the lash line or if the eyeliner on, because you will see it. So 
So now I'm just going to use the smaller ones, these are the 10. So like I said, you can buy um, a pack of 10 and a pack of 12, but you can also get the mixed packs. So just look down and across. If you know you've got someone, a bride, or someone who you know is going to cry, just go individuals. I'm just putting, I know I'm going on, you could probably just buy one lash to do all this, but I'm just taking the shorter ones, something I always do, I put shorter ones through the thicker ones, just to get extra fluffiness. And the good thing about, you might think, oh, right, it's, there's so many single lashes, why you didn't put a full one on there? It's, all, it's so much more comfortable for the person wearing them. So this is just some cray and I'm just gonna put that on first. That's at a vein, or is it a spot there? So yeah, I'm actually using moisturizer as a cleanser. I'm just gonna get that little line. So this is the important part where you come in and you check all your angles and you make sure there's nothing you don't like because you're about to do all the skin. So this is just the powder. And I'm just putting that at the bottom part of that eyeshadow. And the, you know, just be careful, you don't want to get that powder on those lashes. So you've got to be very delicate, don't flick everything around the face. You can do this and then do your mascara after, of course. But silly me didn't do that, so. Because I've now powdered that, it won't bleed. Same colour. So just don't take this brush anywhere near that eyeshadow, because it'll be a hot mess. I'm just coming right up to that green, and then here. Just, and I always do this part when the models are straight ahead, because so then I can see how that fits it perfectly. The hardest part when you're working with these pigment colours is just making sure you don't put them anywhere where you don't want them. I am not going to contour you at this moment. I don't think you need it. Surprise, surprise. Damn. <laughs> but I do want to put some bronzer on you. Now this is a new colour, this is Trini. Um, I don't know how you say this one. There's actually a couple, there's Sawala that I love. That's actually my favourite bronzer. It's one of my favourites. But this one's interesting, it's a gel formula. And what I like, it's that the bronzer is so real in colour, it just suits everyone. Because it's a gel, it's transparent. So it's not, um, how do I explain it? You really see the skin through it, and it's, see how gentle, like it's so gentle. It's the bronzer that I use if I think, do I, I don't want bronzer, but the model does. Okay, put this on. <laughs> Keep her happy. <laughs> It's so subtle. And what I do like about it, okay, now that I'm not going to contour, I'm just going to come in just underneath, more as a bronze cheek. So I'm going to come in, your cheekbones are crazy. So I'm just coming underneath, like I would apply blush. So what I love about this though too, is if I then decide at the end, I just want to put a bit of rose on her. She's got this support, I call it. Thank you, Trini. Lip. Save the hard to last. <laughs> Thank you. Bloodstone, here we go. So stretch out nice and tight and close. So it's just that thing. I feel like a bit like a Mr. Squiggle. Still light rub together. I just throw it all into the interior. I'll just get it on there because mats can be a lot harder. So I just want to check with the reds. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Okay, so I'll just close some there. That's it. Open for me. And stretch back. Set it to me. So these are good if you're in a hurry to get colour on. And then I use a pencil at the end. Open for me. Smile for me, nice and tight. Okay, the tightness, what that's going to do has helped me get a really nice sharp edge. I'm just putting that cotton pad there because I'm just so scared I might have green or something on my fingers. And the slow pullback is where you get the sharp line. Just kind 
whatever. And this is when normally you're in a panic because you run out of time and the model's got to run to set, but this is a time where you've got to be really patient. I wish I could do lips first to get them done because that's the panic stretch type for me and close. They do, in fact, smile, that's it. Um, but the thing is, view lips first, they've got to eat, drink, you lean on them. I've tried it, it's been one big hot mess, so I won't be doing that again. Okay, so now what the trick is, before I finish this off, I tilt her head back. And this is where I come like that and see the shape. Because you might think you've done the most perfect job, but see how I can see the dint there, the dint there, that's not straight, that's not perfect, that's not even. And it's really important to check lips on a tilt back. That's how that even's a Kiwi. Where is that? It's New Zealand, are you from? Um, North Island. That's from New Plymouth? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Not many people have. Mm. Oh, beautiful country. Mm. No snakes. It's my favourite thing. Nothing that can really kill you, though. No. If your lips get dry, which they will with matte lipsticks, my trick is I just keep men's lip balm in my kit because it's more matte. You are doing so well. And relax. Give it one more go and we're done. Stay close, it's just like that. So I'm just going to kill, if you can just see the shine in that skin, which I love, I'm just going to take it away just in this T zone part here. But keep, I call it reverse highlighting, where I actually keep shine where I want it so I'm not going to use it all over this music in okay now I have no idea what this looks like front on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump behind the camera for a second I'm going to steal this off you and I'm going to actually pause it I'm going to give the camera to you Eden you and do. you're going to do like a little yeah you have a little selfie moment